to History with Tanya. I'm your host, Tanya. This is Grandpa. He's real needy. Let me talk to you about how improv is going to fail as an art form, not only spiritually, but emotionally, mentally, physically, psychologically. I've lost all other words that include the study of some other subject. So we're going to continue. Improv is a dead art form. When you think of improv, you think of, oh, who's on it anyway? I remember watching that like five years ago with Drew Carey on. It was real fun. Nowadays, I don't know if it's still on. I know it came back, but who knows if it's still here. I hope I don't get sued. Please don't sue me. Drink this drink now. <laughs> it's gonna be so good. It's gonna be the best documentary I've ever made. Yeah. Improv. Italy is somewhere uh, here. <laughs> I think. It's in Europe. <laughs> Hold on, there's a boot. That's Italy. That's that's where improv started. Uh, because uh, there's something called Comedia dell'arte. Uh, what? Comedia dell'arte. Uh, okay. Which is uh, fantastic. Um, basically, if you know Futurama, uh, Zap Brannigan, he yeah. is uh, the stereotypical uh, El Capitan character which comes from Italy, uh, where improv started. Um, basically, they took scenarios uh, and incorporated their own kind of, like, ideas or, like, feelings or, like, you know, social commentary in these scenarios that they performed on stage, and that was the beginning of improv. Uh, so, currently, we have an improv club. It's, uh, it was started... I think in like 2013 or something. I can't remember the date because I wasn't here. Um, but I started like three years ago and it was great then. Like people were funny, they knew how to improvise. That brings us to the present day. <laughs> Money. So. Improv used to be a thing where you could go to something on a Friday night and spend five dollars for you and your friend to go to improv. We're raising that price to everyone pays five dollars just straight across the board. Why? Because people stop coming to our shows, so why should we offer a two for five dollars or three for... I guess that would be like... Eight dollars because one would be for three dollars. I don't know math right now. Anywho, we don't have money because we spend all of our money on things. Not things for us, but things for the community. So basically whenever there's like some sort of crisis going on or if there's like a like a local group that needs like money to fund something cool like last year we donated money to like children the children's home um so we have no money because we spend it all on everyone else and claire purcell keeps telling us to open a bank account but we literally have no money to put into that bank account because we can count the money we own in like two 100 dollars bills that we have in a very large cash box I don't know why it's so large, but it's there. So I've been asked to just reiterate how large our cash box is. Now, if you take a standard locker size and you look at it, uh, you're like, wow, you know, I can put my backpack in there, maybe a water bottle. Um, personally, I, I stick my gloves in there, so I, I carry my baseball gloves with me. Um, anyone wants to play, I'm down. So. Like, you could fit a lot of things in there. 
I have like a surgery gun in there. I have my scrubs in there. Uh, sometimes I may have food in there that, you know, cause you're not allowed to eat in the classrooms. But this cash box literally cannot fit horizontally in this locker. Like you have to like kind of turn it on its side and then like put it in cause like longitudinally it can fit. And then just like slightly tilt it backwards. And it, it, it might fit, but everything you were like organized in there, no longer organized because you had to turn it. Um, that's, that's how big this cash box is. I don't think I prepared people well. I'm gonna leave. And clearly, I can never leave. Otherwise, the club will fail immediately. No, that's not a good answer. You know what's a good answer? The price of tacos. Better run, boy.